Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Ghoulish. I am Max Booth, a host. And today on the show, Betty Rocksteady returns after, what, 10, 11 months without being on the show? Holy shit. And guess what she's talking about? Spooky cartoons, obviously. Specifically, Edgild Gully, one of the, uh, the OG spooky cartoonists around. He, uh, he's pretty fucking radical. And we're going to get into why on the episode. So let's go ahead and get right on into it, huh? <laughs> let's go ahead and do it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Betty, you want to you wanna talk about Eddie Child Slayle G with me? I do, yeah. He That is someone who likes fiction about dead children even more than I do. Do you think it was restricted to fiction? Um, strictly speaking, I'm not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> you signed an NDA? I did, yeah. Nice. I didn't know they had NDAs in Canada. That's amazing. Oh, Canada is an amazing and magical place. <laughs> is it is it called <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a disclaimer and apologize in advance, but is it called an NDA? No, uh, yes. Okay, cool. Do you, uh, do you often get sick of uh, Canadian jokes from Americans? Not really. There's nothing really bad you can say about Canadians. I mean, like, America is kind of a joke, so <laughs> <laughs> there's not so much you can say that's really going to bother me. Growing up, the biggest insult that Americans would, like, say about Canada is, oh, yeah, those guys, they're all nice. Yeah, that's terrible, right? Those fucking Canadians are way too nice. Meanwhile, your country is, um, has suffered not from people being too nice. What do you mean by that? I mean, your country is a shit show right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know we're trying to distract ourselves from reality right now, but yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a that's an okay thing to say. I'll accept it. Now, who is this man? Tell me who he is, how you discovered him, and why you like him. Okay. Um, Edward Gorey, he is an artist from like the 50s through till about 2000 when he died, I guess, and mostly did like pen and ink illustration, completely pen and ink illustration, lots of like meticulous cross hatching, and he made a lot of books that looked like they were for children, but they weren't actually for children. Uh, he was your basic reclusive artist, and yeah, made lots of little creepy books. We looked at some of them, and we're going to talk about them. I was browsing the Wikipedia page while I was waiting on you to uh, discover what a microphone was, and, uh -huh. <laughs> and I saw that he uh, he hated children, which I thought was pretty cool. Did you say he hated children? I knew he never like liked children. He never was into them. He was a really like general like eccentric dude. Anyway, he didn't like children. He never got into romantic relationships. Um, he just kind of, like, stayed home and drew little pictures. He was really into ballet. I did not know about the ballet. That's cool. From the Wikipedia page I was reading, which, again, who knows how true Wikipedia is. I mean, anyone could edit it. I used to write Wikipedia pages, and I was paid. So, okay. But the, the page I'm reading says he did not associate with children much and had no fondness for them at all. And then went on to write a lot of books with dead children in them. So, yeah, there's something something going on there. You could say similar things about me, though. I also have no particular fondness for children, and I've never been seen associated with them. And my books are a little dark. So I feel a certain kinship with them. <laughs> I, 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 I thought of you as well when I was reading this Wikipedia page because I knew we were doing the episode about it. But also... <laughs> 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 also, he left the majority of his estate to a charity trust fund benefiting benefiting dogs and cats and also bats yeah. and insects he's super into cats he had like six cats i have um a print he did here 17 cats on maple street he like he like drawing cats he like being around cats he liked them more than people which also yeah he's he knows what's up i don't think you sent me a a book at all with a cat involved. I don't recall any cats in the books I read. Yeah, the ones that I sent you were like mostly from the uh, 50s and 60s. And I don't know, they're just ones that kind of stuck out to me. 
Um, the Gashly Crumb Tanyes is probably his most popular one, so you needed to see that. Okay, that's that's the alphabet one, right? That's the alphabet one, yeah. He did a couple different alphabet ones. Um, all of the, he liked to do little tiny books. Like, they were, like, weirdly sized, and then they were collected into uh, these Amphigory volumes, which is the stories you sell, were all from the Amphigory volumes, and just all the little books together. Now, what does the uh, the title of this alphabet book mean? I uh, I don't understand this language. The Gashley Crumb Tiny? Yeah, I, I know what the means, but beyond that, I'm puzzled. I'm gonna be honest, I just, I think that's just, like, what they're called. Like, it's just, he, his thing was, like, he liked to do literary nonsense, similar to, like, Lewis Carroll. So if there's some stuff that doesn't get completely explained, that's all part of it to him. One of his mission statements was, like, he likes to make people uneasy, and he likes things unexplained, very surrealist kind of tendencies, and then just these intricately cross-hatched weird little like kind of cartoon style drawings but very precise and very like overdone with the scratchy ink work now this wikipedia page claims that his uh he usually used scenes from victorian and edwardian settings now i don't know what edwardian means but i have to assume it was named after him it must have been yeah yeah okay there you go. Do you know what it means? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just... <laughs> um, but it was just like a very like gothic kind of style. Um, and he was American. Like he's lived his whole life in the U.S. Wow, and you were well, making yeah. fun of his home country a minute ago. I know. I know. It's very sad. One of the only good things to come from America yeah. ever glory. I, I I agree with that. I'm only just now dis- discovering this man today, and I would agree. I read, what, five? No, full books of his today, and mm-hmm. I guess we should begin with the one we've already talked about, the one with a nonsense title. The like Ashley Crumb Tiny's. Yeah, that one was really popular. I remember, like, when I was growing up, like, all the goth kids were into it. It's got the alphabet, and it's just 26 kids, you know, A is for Amy, who fell down the stairs. And each one is a little drawing of a child, mostly just about to die horribly. Like, it's kind of caught in the moment just before it happens. It was uh, no surprise to me that you wanted to do an episode about uh, this guy once I began reading his books. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, you uh, also love talking about the death of children. That's yeah. true, yeah. I, I was picturing you reading the first, we'll get to that one later, but the first one I sent you. The Hapless yeah. Child? I was picturing you reading that one as your first exposure to him and just laughing my head off. (laughs) (laughs) It's so dark and just not knowing what to expect. I bet it was really fun. (laughs) I admit I had to read it twice once I realized what was going on. I had to, wait a second, what what am I reading right now? Something these books reminded me of a lot was a book I was obsessed with as a kid called The uh, Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy by uh, Tim Bilton. Do you know about this book? Yeah, I do. Actually, I think Burton is very gory inspired. He, he has to be because, I mean, I haven't liked that, those, that book when I, since I was a kid. But if I recall, the illustrations and the poems were really similar to the ones mm-hmm. that you showed me today. That makes sense. Yeah, I haven't. I don't recall that book that well, but I, I have read it at one point. And I know Burton's style is very like that kind of like cross-hatchy black and white pen and ink look too so yeah i was reading some more articles about edward gore lately too and a lot of them mentioned tim burton as someone who was influenced by him yeah what a what a thief he is a thief have you ever considered making a uh, a Betty Rock Steady alphabet? Well, excuse me a tiny a teeny i don't know what the <laughs> fuck that rule means <laughs> Um, that would be fun. I've never thought about doing an alphabet one, but I would like to do, like, a bunch of little weird books, definitely. Yeah, you should. What would you call them? Um, I don't know. What should I call them, Max? I don't know. Uh, books by Betty Rocksteady? I don't know. It's very creative. Let's go on to The Hapless Child, because... The Hapless Child is one of my favorite by him, and I don't... It's just very dark. 
And um, I'm just flipping to my book here to get to it. And what did you think of it? Tell me your impression of it the first time. Okay. So I like the illustrations. I thought the text was really difficult to read. But that's only because I think you I read it through a photographs that you took of the book and then sent me through private message. So I, lots of zooming was involved. But once I got the hang of it, it's pretty good. I mean, the the, the plot is uh, pretty simple. It's one we've all lived through at one point. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember now without looking at it, but it's a, uh, a young child who lives with a pretty uh, well-to-do uh, family. The dad goes off to, uh, to fight some battles, and then the family is uh, notified that he died. And I believe the mom uh, commits suicide. Is that what we all to believe? I think she uh, she just wasted away was implied. But I wouldn't be shocked to find out she committed suicide. I mean, I, th- I thought the way he phrased it with like a like wasting away was just like a poetic way of saying, yeah, she drank some poison. Yeah, OK. I don't know. I can you'll, get into that. You're the uh, hapless child expert. I was under the impression she just wasted away of general sadness, which is kind of an Edward Gorey thing, I think. All right. And then what happens next? She uh, she she goes to an uncle, but the uncle's like, nah, I don't want this. No, her only other relative, an uncle, was brained by a piece of masonry. <laughs> <laughs> and he just dies, I guess. <laughs> And then she ends up uh, in the hands of the family lawyer. She And it's just like one, you know, like a big picture and then one sentence of plot for each page kind of thing. She ends, yeah. up in a, she ends up in a boarding school and it's terrible. She runs away. She oh, There's one panel where it's just like at night she lay awake weeping and weeping. <laughs> it's just very terrible. You could tell you had a lot of fun just making these kids suffer. I find the drawings really interesting in this, too. They're, I find all the backgrounds, like, very claustrophobic, almost. Like, the little girl is drawn very pale, and the only light point in the picture, and everything else is very dark and dreary and thick patterns on the walls. Yeah. I'm looking at them now. I had to bring them up on my phone. I do love that when she runs away from the orphanage, she runs until she gets so tired she falls asleep on the street. And then one man comes by and, and steals a locket containing a family photo. Although I did read it wrong originally, and I thought he took the photo out of the locket and only took the photo, which would have been even funnier. That would have been a really big fuck you. But yeah, then another man comes in the opposite direction and takes her to a low place, which is a terrifying term, I think. A low place? He brought her to a low place. Oh, yeah. And it's just this guy with a big, I love his mustache, carrying her like a sack of potatoes. And this room just has, I don't know, like a bunch of rocks on the floor. <laughs> and a ballet postal? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the low place, that would be a good title of a book. It would. Maybe that'll be my little Rock City books. Uh, low places? Mm. But yeah, so then he, then that guy sells her to a drunken brute. And that guy's an asshole. But doesn't he have, like, a difficult time trying to sell the kid? Like, he keeps taking all the different places. Mm, no, it looks like it was just the one time. Oh, okay. Maybe you read the same page too many times. Yeah, that's possible. <laughs> but, yeah, so then she's with the drunken brute. He puts her to work making artificial flowers, and he keeps getting the horrors. Which is just him thrashing around, I guess. Yeah, I wasn't positive what that meant. I I thought maybe he was just getting a going on drunken binges, perhaps. Hmm. Anyway, her eyesight gets bad, and then all of a sudden we find out her father isn't dead at all. He returned home, and he's out looking for her. So you know, she finally escapes the drunken brute, falls outside, and promptly gets run over by her father's carriage. And as a final fuck you, he doesn't even, he he gets out to look at the dying child and he doesn't even recognize her because she's such a mess. <laughs> the end. <laughs> do, you, do you think he just left a kid in the street and drove away fast? Maybe. He's like, oh yeah, she's she's dead now. <laughs> Before she runs away from the uh, drunken brute, the line is, at last the brute went off his head. What do you suppose that means? 
not entirely sure. Like, it looks vaguely threatening. He's got fake flowers in one hand, a broken bottle in the other hand. What, what do you think it suggests? Oh, I have, I have no idea. It's something, I feel like he's just freaking out. Like, screaming, being violent, threatening. There, and there's little, I don't know if you noticed, but there's little, like, almost like a little demon guy in the background of every picture. What? There's, like, this little devil-looking, little black devil thing in every picture. Oh, shit. I did not notice this until you said it. What's up with that? Um, he just liked to sneak things. I mean, again, one of his things was he didn't like to explain things. He just wanted to leave an unsettling feeling. So, I imagine as to that, the very last page, too, is a little weird. It's a picture of a little... Demon guy holding... Yeah. Is that a head? Oh, it looks like it's a picture of her in a cameo or something. Oh my god, this is one of those guys, like, on the street, you go up to him and you say, Hey, I'll give you five butts if you draw me as a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I make a living somehow. I get that little, little demon dude to draw me, but yeah, so that's um, the hapless child. She just had a shit go. A nice, uh, I, I'm surprised Disney has never tried to adapt these. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that one's always stuck with me. It's one of my favorites by him. Oh, man, I think I skipped one of these. That's okay. Which other ones did you... I skipped the one between the hapless child and the insect god. Oh, the West Wing? That's too bad. I really like that one. I'm looking at it now. It doesn't seem to have any images, so it's pretty easy to look at. Or any... I mean, any text. Yeah. 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 It's just so blank West... pages. <laughs> it must have been really easy to produce. Yeah, the West Wing is great. It's just pictures. It's uh, how many are there? Maybe like thirty pictures. I see a I see a naked man with his hands around his ass, just leaning against a steel case railing. It's just like it's a whole bunch of pictures of I guess the West Wing of this big haunted, unsettling place, and the pictures just kind of get you the feeling of wandering through the halls, and nothing is overtly wrong, but everything's kind of wrong. I see a mummy. There, yeah, that one maybe is a bit overtly wrong. There's one, like, this one's just like a, a hallway, a very dark corner with a chair askew at the end of the corner. Yeah. I really like the one, uh, there's one of, like, just, uh, the floor is very detailed and kind of suffocating. It's the same with the wallpaper, and then there's just, like, the image of a man laying down, burned into the wallpaper. Yes. That, that is one, odd. I like that one quite a lot. They're all very just like dark, really heavy on the gray tones. Nothing. It's just very strange. What's this little uh, insect guy just walking along in the ground? Yeah, that looks like a little, I was just looking at him. He looks like a little fuzzy lizard. I don't know. I like it. I would have I, one of those as a pet. I would also have one of those as a pet. What would you name him? I was just going to ask you that. Uh, <laughs> I guess I would call him uh, Eddie G. Eddie G. I mean, he had to have gone by that name, right? Eddie G. It just sounds cool. Well, yeah. In his, yeah, I think he did. Especially at the ballet. Was he in, like, did he participate in ballet? No, but he, there's this one ballet dude that he really liked. I guess the director of the court. I don't know how ballet works. But he really liked this one dude, and for three decades, his whole schedule, his everyday schedule, was going around to see this guy's shows, I guess. He was just heavily, he loved watching ballet. Oh, badass. I have a question about ballet. How come it's not uh, pronounced ballet? Um, that's an excellent question. Ballet. It sounds cooler. Ballet. I don't like builds with uh, silent levels in it. It's just needlessly confusing. It's sneaky, is what I think it is. Yeah, it's like, oh, you just want to be smelt. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. It's like when someone, it's like if you will uh, spend the night with somebody, right? And they said, oh, what do you want to do tomorrow? And they said, well, technically, it's actual midnight, so it's already tomorrow. What if I was talking about the next day after that, though? Well, you should have, uh, I don't know. I didn't think about that. Let's move on to the inset guide. <laughs> Let's another one where it's basically just like that. 
Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. <laughs> That's it. I was just flipping in my book to get to it again. Uh, so the insect god was the second one I read. It also involves a child dying, and I thought, okay, this guy has a, this guy has a theme. That's why I had to send you a couple more after that because I was like, I think I only sent him dead children once, and then I ended up sending them to Gashly Crumb Tinies, which. Didn't really help that impression, I guess. It's like an anthem of dead children, which I like. I mm. it would be an, that uh, the alphabet one would make an excellent like a uh, calendar, except those uh, more images than months in the year. So I don't know how to fix that. I don't know how to fix that either. We need ca- some kind of calendar expert. Do you know any? I know a couple. Yeah, I can recommend one. Well, they called again. Calendar expert. Ah, yes. So in the the, the inset god, uh, that's a great name of a book, and it begins with a child going missing, and the town kind of goes what in disarray trying to find them. Do these images also have a sneaky little uh, devil in the background? I didn't check. I didn't catch one in that. Um, this one's a lot shorter too. No, I don't see any little hidden things in these. These are all very like they're all very dense pictures just so much like they must take a very very long time to draw these so many tiny little lines i don't know it seems pretty easy i mean it's just black and white yeah that's all there is to it um but yeah she went missing it's a little rhymey thing she's playing at the park and someone picked her up and everyone's very upset what's what's going on with this uh this nulse that they find passed out in the woods. I was a little confused. I don't know. I quite like that little one, though. Like, she's just... The nurse was discovered collapsed in some shrubbery. But she was just all fucked up, so she wasn't able to help them find her much, I guess. She was full of brown juice. What do you suppose brown juice is, Betty? I guess it's some kind of bug juice. <laughs> some kind of bug substance that they use to make her have a bad time i really don't know <laughs> i uh i guess i was confused because i didn't know if she was like involved in the silch penalty or if this was just an unrelated discovery or what the fuck happened i guess i expect that was the child's nurse more so like she's not a nurse she's like a nanny kind of thing I don't know. It's she's referenced as the nurse. I guess I was picturing her the child nurse, gotcha. which isn't really a thing. Maybe I uh, I wonder if the brown juice was uh, related or not. Maybe she just doesn't wash her clothing. That's possible. Maybe she just likes brown juice. Yeah, who doesn't like brown juice? I mean, what is that called in Canada? Poo- <laughs> What's that gravy called? Poutine. Are you yeah. About- yeah, I'm always nervous about saying that rule because I'm. I feel like if I say it wrong, it's gonna sound awful. Yeah, no, it's poutine. Um, there's probably like a better way of pronouncing it. I'm very Cape Breton accented, but poutine will do. Yeah, maybe it was a Canadian gravy. Well, no, poutine isn't just the gravy. Poutine is a dish made of French fries, cheese, oh. and gravy. Oh shit! Okay. It doesn't reference the gravy. It references the whole entity i did not realize that and when you go to a restaurant if you get anything you get like if you're like oh i'm gonna get a burger you can always get your fries with your burger turned into a poutine instead of just fries so if i said can you add canadian gravy to my fries would i be kicked out yes (laughs) (laughs) breaking some uh, canadian uh misconceptions there's there's a lot of weird etiquette laws here yeah What's the strangest one you've uh, come across? Uh, the poutine one. Oh, okay. Wow. So it was fries, gravy, and what? Cheese. Cheese curds, traditionally, but oh. a lot of places just use shredded cheese. And then the gravy melts the cheese. That sounds really good. It is really good, yeah. Shit. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> the insect god... Uh, well, they just, they eventually find the kid. What happens? They come across a, a spooky family of occultists? Um, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody just, like, keeps looking for her and being upset. And then at the end we see that they're just these giant insects doing weird things to her. Well, what's up with this spooky family? 
That's her family. And they're sad that she's gone. Oh, they looked like a, I don't know. I thought maybe they were involved somehow by the way they looked. They looked emotionless, and I thought, aha, maybe, maybe they'll just like uh, insects uh, using human suits. I don't know what maybe, I thought. Maybe I misunderstood it. I don't know. I think, it, but yeah, no, I thought it was her family's very sad that she's gone, and now she got eaten by insects. Oh. Okay. Well, okay, so on the last page, it says, they removed the child to the ballroom. Who is they, then? What are they removing, if not the child? They, they stunned till and stripped off the garments, and lastly, they stepped till inside a kind of pod, and it was, and then it was that Malefic Maleficent, whatever, well, for Astley, was sacrificed to the insect god. So I thought a family was sacrificing all to an insect god. No, I think these are the giant insects that picked her up in the car earlier. <laughs> 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 and now they're sacrificing her to their god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to back up. Now you're trying to tell me insects are driving a vehicle. I have questions. How do they learn to drive? What are they willing? Do they have a plan if a cop pulls them over? Will do they I get a vehicle? Max, I've never claimed to be an expert on these giant insects. I can only tell you what I've seen, which is documented in this documentary by Edward Gorey that we're reading. This and all I know is that in that panel there's a <laughs> big guy with some antenna picking her up in the car i really hope that they have like a trench coat maybe a fake mustache because this is highly amusing to think about it does kind of look like he's wearing a trench coat or some sort of big garment okay so now you're telling me we can see antennas in this vehicle hold on i'm zooming in on the photo you sent me which was sideways <laughs> my bad. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, I'm just going to trust you because every time I rotate my phone, it rotates the opposite way. <laughs> You're just going to have to trust me. <laughs> yeah, okay, so in all in all, we can say that that one was a bit confusing for us, so that's fine. Yeah. That is kind of his intent anyway. I, uh, yeah, okay, I'm with you. I was not expecting these insects to be driving so that threw me off but I'm, I'm back i'm back on it what else do we have we have what uh the doubtful guest is that the last one yeah that's the last one i think that was another one of his more popular ones and i want to send you one where a child didn't die at least one <laughs> i have to say this is the one i like the least yeah well that's fair it's more. It's not one of my favorites either, actually. Um, neither is the Gashley Crumb Tinies. I, I don't know, something about them doesn't do as much for me as it does for other fans of his, I guess. But uh, yeah, this one was just an absurd, surreal little duck penguin looking creature that just shows up one day and generally makes itself inconvenient and annoying. Yeah, I was going to ask you what you thought the thing was, because penguin is what came to my mind. I don't believe it's supposed to be anything. It's supposed to be kind of like an indistinct creature, anyway, with a scarf and sneakers on. He just, well, he or she, it, I think is what they use as a pronoun in the book, is it. Uh, they, it, it just rings the doorbell one day, they open the door, and it just walks in and, and just begins wrecking shit, and they decide, ah, I guess this is life now, and they go to bed, and the this next is just... day, it's still around. And then 17 years it stays. And, and it's just being a dick the no whole intention time. of going away. Just this absolute yeah, dickhead. You know, like, throw their stuff in the pond, get in the way of the door you're trying to open, lay inside the punch bowl, I think it is. <laughs> At one point, the thing is just opening books and ripping out the pages. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's a dick. I like that, but I think maybe what I was disappointed about was the uh, the lack of a resolution. It just kind of went, well, that's just, was this family's life now? Wasn't that odd? And that was it. I think that was one of the his points in that, I think, was that a lot of his books were just kind of like rambly. Like, this one in particular, I read someone say that this one just exists for the point of existing. Like, it's not doing anything it's not moving plot forward it's yeah. just a vehicle to draw a bunch of weird little pictures 
Do you think it's supposed I'm to be kind a, of unsettled? Do you think it's supposed to be like a metaphor of oh, this is what it's like when you have a child, so don't? Oh, maybe <laughs> I can see that now that you say it. I don't know if it was intentional, but yeah. So maybe it is a a, a childrenal bad book after all. That makes me feel better. Yeah. How did you come across this guy? You know, I'm not even sure. Like, I've known who he was since I was a teenager, and I've always liked his art. And uh, when I first got into drawing pen and ink in my early 20s, I was, like, heavily into him, and I read. It's been years and years since I've read through these books that I sent you. It was nice to go through them again. What made you uh, want to talk about him on this podcast? Because this was not my idea. You uh, randomly got on Skype and said, hey, we're going to talk about this guy. And I said, okay. I don't, I don't even know what made me think of him, actually. Uh, just something the other day. I was like, hmm, that'd be good for ghoulish. And then I told you, and now here we are. Yeah, I think the last time we, we talked on Skype at all was the last episode of Ghoulish, which was uh, like 10, 11 months ago. What, cartoons? Is that what we were talking yeah, about? That's a uh, long time ago, yeah. Hell's Bells. Uh, that's the one that I can remember. Satan's Playground? I don't know. I have a, <laughs> I have a, I have a cartoon question for you. Why um, is it called pen and ink drawings? Isn't pen and ink the same thing? I think they're um, generally using calligraphy, that kind of calligraphy nib pen. So it's um, a pen that you add ink to as you draw, not the pen that has ink in it already. Well, that answer seems really obvious, and I am stupid for not realizing that. <laughs> I know, and after all these years of drawing with pen and nib pen and ink that you've been doing, Max, I would think you would know the difference. I uh, I don't need to go through any type of training or research. My, my gifts are just uh, natural, so mm. yeah. Okay. What else can you uh, tell me about this guy? How did he die? Any fun uh, Eddie G facts? Um, I don't know when he died, but I do have in my hands um, a little tarot type kind of thing that he made called a Fantod deck, which is uh, just a bunch of weird pictures and unnerving fortunes. So I thought I could tell your fortune. Oh my god, please do. Okay, I'm just going to pick one card for you, and then I'll read out of the little book. I'll describe the card to you and read out of the little book what you are what you can look forward to. Yes. Okay, so this card is called The Feather, and there's a picture of a lady on it. She has a long black dress and a great big feather in her hand. And I'm going to look it up in my little book. Okay. I can, I can already guess. I'm probably going to get tickled at some point. Here are the random words that it gives you to expect. November, blackmail, forged passport, hysterical pregnancy, loss of eyelashes, disorders of the small intestine, a disagreeable letter, delirium, hindrance to prospects, twitching, separation, imbroglios, and a mistake. What was that? Uh, the second to last one? What does that mean? <laughs> I have no um, Do you want to Google it? It's I M B R O G L I O S. I have no idea how to pronounce okay. that. I am uh, an extremely confused, complicated, or embarrassing si situation. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds exactly <laughs> like something that would happen to you. Yes. What a, what a cool world. I've never heard of such a thing. We can use it in everything now. I'm going to name a book that. And no one's going to know how to say it. There are a lot of, like, these cards are really cool. I'll have to uh, post some pictures or something sometime. There's, like, the burning head. Uh, can the you tunnel. can you do one for the audience who's listening? Oh, absolutely. All right. This is how the podcast went. So before we do this, uh, how can people find you online? What do you have to promote? I don't have anything to promote, but everyone can come talk to me on Facebook if they want. I've been drawing a lot of cartoons lately, and they can look at them, I guess. Okay. And also, they should buy The Writhing Skies, God damn Oh, it. yeah. <laughs> they should buy The Writhing Skies, because that is my illustrated book. And we're talking about illustrations, so that's a good one. Yes. And it has kind of bad things happening to children in it. So, yeah, you'll like it. Okay. So, let's end this episode by telling the audience how they were probably going to die. 
All right, so the card I selected for the audience is the bottle, and it is mostly white drawing, uh, just the outline of a bottle, and in the bottle, a strange little creature with four legs, and it looks like a cross between a frog and a cat. <laughs> <laughs> you can picture that. A, f- uh, a fat? A crog? A cro- Let's go with a crog. Yeah. And I'm just looking it up in my book. All right, here are the words for you. December, melancholy, itching, unfortunate publicity, a a disregarded warning, irregularity, an accident on a bicycle, loss of feeling, flukes, vexation, intrigue, abandonment, and frustrated hopes. So that's what the audience has to look forward to. Thank you for listening to a new episode of Ghoulish. If you like what was just uh, screwed into your brainwaves, why don't you go rate and review us on iTunes and support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. Go uh, buy a book at perpetualpublishing.com. We just released a new novella from Michael David Wilson called The Girl in the Video. It's a pretty good book. Go buy it. I also have a new novel out called Touch the Night from Touch from a Cemetery Dance, and I think maybe you folks might enjoy it. So yeah, if you like the gold putting out, consider Sophonius through the various ways I just told you. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Ah, 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 ooh.